Trav was a freshman and he had just gotten to be taller then. So he was feeling himself. He's feeling himself and I'm getting pissed off that he's feeling himself. We're out in the backyard and he starts just driving and doing this stupid little hook shot and I can't do anything to stop it. So of course I resort to fouling him. He picks the ball up, throws it at me. I'd grab him on the shoulder, punch him in the face. And every time before that, he would cry or whatever. He took this punch, scooped me up off my feet and slam me on the kitchen floor so hard. I get up, we're, up, we're in a full on fist fight. Yeah, I do it big, big, big. I'm coming to win. I do it big, big, big. Say it again. I do it big, big, big. I'm coming to win. I do it big, big, big. Say it again. I do it big. We are now joined by a very special guest. From Cleveland Heights, Ohio, this man went from a sixth round pick to a six time first team all pro. A bearded wonder with a penchant for taking off of his shirt, this man was voted one of the sexiest men alive, not by GQ South Africa, but by People Magazine. <laughs> As the tush push took over the NFL, tush it push. was his tush that was getting pushed. Super Bowl champ and podcaster, Jason Kelsey in the house. Thanks for having me, guys. Now, I have known this guy for years, years. And to see you go from, I don't think anybody knows who I am, to I launch a podcast, to I win a Super Bowl and I'm wearing the Mummer's Day Parade, to now, you're it, bro. People are lining up and they want to, I'm just, I'm, I am just want to say as a friend, You've been, I'm proud of you. You were there for the come up, yeah. No, yeah and, no. and you deserve everything, bro. I'm I proud of you. It. Yeah, it started out when you pulled that prank on me over yeah. with, so yeah. You did that was, help. Dude, yeah, we did. Just, we told him that we had a jersey signed by everybody, and we had an actress spill red known. wine all over they had, the like, They said jersey. they had Jerry Rice on it. I should have known. Something. And then when we went up there and said what happened, she went, he pushed me. And he, as a good guy, went, ah, uh, yeah. Like, he took it, bro. I'm like he sitting took here, it. I'm like, she's really doing this to me right here. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I don't want her to get fired. I'm just going to let roll with the punches on this. So thing. you're retired now, right? Still figuring it out. Okay, so what has to happen for you to play next season? Um, I think if I still want to play, I'm going to play. I think, you know, right now we're not far enough away from the last game. It's emotional. It's a long season. We ended the season, quite frankly, awful. You know that as a yeah. Bruce fan. And um, so I'm just going to take some time, rest, recoup, and then figure it out. I think I'll have an answer in the next couple What would weeks. your advice be? Because you had an incredible advice. career and... How many years did you play? I played 19, but I wanted to go 20. I wanted to go 20, but uh, when I was in Boston, I had the career ending injury and then I was only making a million and I wasn't the same Shaq. So I was like, I'm not coming back, but you got your ring. Yeah. And he's still happy. killing it, bro. Yes. I did. You made the Pro Bowl this year. Congratulations to both. Growing up was there. I asked this question because me and my brother always had competition. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean, I mean like, like, like really competitions. Fight. So, yes. seriously? Over basketball. Give us the story. I so, uh, I was the older brother. Right. So, I was always the bigger one. I was winning most of the competitions growing up. And I was a junior in high school. Trav was a freshman. And he had just gotten to be taller than me. He was always more athletic, but I was ahead of him. So, was, he had just hit puberty. So, he was feeling himself. He's feeling himself. And I'm getting pissed off that he's feeling himself. Right. We're out in the backyard. And he starts just driving and doing this stupid little hook shot over like his shoulder. It wasn't a hook shot, but like a driving like little, whatever that's called. And he is making it every single time and I can't do anything to stop it. So of course I resort to fouling him. The only way I know how to stop it. And he says, that's bullshit, that's a foul. And I'm like, I don't see any refs out here. I don't see anybody calling it. He picks the ball up, throws it at me, goes in the house. I'm like, this mother, he just throw this ball at me. So I go in there. I'd grab him on the shoulder and I'd punch him. And I, this, listen, we would fight all the time. This is the only, twice, the second time I'd ever punched him. I don't know how I got that heated. Punched him in the face and 
Every time wow, in the before face. that, in the face. Damn. And every time before that, he would cry or whatever. He took this punch, scooped me up off my feet and slammed me on the kitchen t- floor so hard, the oven got knocked off the rack, like what it was sitting on, on the uh, tracks. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I get up, we're, we're in a full on fist fight. Wow. Dad comes behind me to break it up, grabs me. Travis pushes me back on top of my fa- of dad. And the only thing that stopped the fight was my dad screaming, ah, my ribs. And we thought that we had hurt him. So we snapped out of it. But that's the last time we ever got in a fight. Really? Last fight we've ever been in. Um, we, we were competitive in everything. And he was, um, you, you always knew at every level, he was a, another level of athlete. You know what I mean? I'm going to say something that people don't understand. You see those moments that he's talking about? That's what made me who I am. And it only takes... I was going to say, he, like he has that. a hard time reasoning with people <laughs> because he was raised in a home where like bull is not accepted and suck it up. And I can tell that you were raised in a similar situation. Oh, for sure. Yeah. This story right here, you, you see my eyes? That's, that's a beautiful thing. You were like thing. reminiscing. Yeah, because, because right now you got an saying they shouldn't have did that, but look at who they are. Yeah. yeah. Pro Bowler. Brothers in the what? Third, fourth Super Bowl? Fourth Super Bowl, five years. Yeah. Yeah. Things that you go through toughen you up. Like, you know, everybody thinks the locker room is supposed to be like this. I don't, I don't want a bunch of guys like this in right. my locker room. I want some Kumbaya. guys in my locker room. So that's a beautiful story. The Big Podcast of Shaq is presented by The General. You know your boy Shaq loves The General. Before the league, before the rings, before I got my big break, I've been rocking with The General. The General has been offering quality coverage for 60 years, and now they want to give you a break when you need it. Flexible payment options. huh? Flexible payment options that keep you covered. The ability to pick your due date, huh? <laughs> and low rates and low down payments. Visit thegeneral.com and get a quote. That's thegeneral.com and get a quote today. And it wouldn't be the big podcast if it wasn't presented by the general. Uh, what's your prediction? I know you're gonna say it's your brother. You, you yeah. think it's gonna be a you think it's gonna be a landslide? You think it's gonna be tough? Well, I don't think it'll be a landslide. I think both of these teams are uh, the pinnacle of what the NFL has had for the last four or five years. Chiefs even longer. Uh, they played in this game together, so they both have experience in it. Um, I'm trying to not do a prediction because I don't want to put that juju out there for Trav. But you know, I think uh, the Chiefs have been through a lot. They've they've been through a lot of adversity and they've had to overcome that. You see how tight they are and how much they've come together. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be a really good game. I'm obviously pulling for the Chiefs. Uh, it's going to be a great game to represent the league. It really is. How nervous are you about this speech? What what speech? The best man speech. <laughs> I didn't know if you were going retirement there. If you were, it's going to be Travis and Taylor, right? <laughs> bro, man, everyone's going to be focused, bro. You got to. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just wanted to set him up because I knew he was going to be like, "What the hell are you talking?" Yeah, about? I, I, I didn't know if you were going retirement or best. My you know. my question for you is: Did you know what fame was? No. Until yeah, what did you learn about fame? Um, uh, I don't know that I've learned. I've learned that it, it's it's crazy what it opens up. Um, and it's, Ooh, it's amazing. Chicken. Oh, one. Shaquille style. American Brass. Brass. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, and it's free because I know the owner. Hey, if it's free, it's for me. Uh, Thank you. It's crazy uh, what it opens up opportunity-wise. It's crazy to feel how much joy you bring people or they, how much you affect um, you know, people's daily lives. It's also incredibly, it has its drawbacks for sure. I mean, you know yeah, way yeah. more than I do. Um, and Travis knows way more than I I mean, he had to move, he had to completely move out of his house, right? What, what people were like Operati, coming by? Yeah, people just staying by his house, yeah. I mean, safety reasons. Wow. In, in the first day he moved into the new house. They knew where he was already. A gated community. Somebody knocks on the back door, a window of the house. So Because I know how low-key y'all are. Yeah. Like, I remember when you guys had that charity fashion show yeah. and it was just... All of the boys that you grew up Everybody with. Everybody from since, Cleveland Ice. Yeah. And, and that's the crew. Yeah. So there had to be some growing pains with all that stuff. Yeah, we're still learning. And Travis, I mean, it's so, listen, the, we, we've always been big in the football world, right? Travis especially. The Taylor world and the, the 
the pop culture world, that's a whole different level. Like you're you're in a different. It, it's it's just an a, an added level of it's a new di- demographic that wasn't there before. So if we key if is, hold, okay, go. The key is to stay righteous. Yeah. Like for example, people take pictures of me all the time. They ain't doing. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times they take the pictures because one they're trying to they're trying to up their Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to sell a story. Sure. Like so just. I've been watching you and your brother a long time. I can tell you some good, wholesome people. Just tell them, try not to wear, always keep your head on the swivel now. Cause you know, be some crazy, but don't like, if you're not doing nothing, there's nothing to hide. Yeah, absolutely. See like when I, when I go out, go and take a picture. Like, you know, one time I was coming out and they took a picture. I was like, I'm not married. So <laughs> you can't, I'm good. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Growing up, we put helmets on the sandwich or miracle whip. I'm a helmet guy. Helmets. We never did the Miracle Whip. I honestly, I still don't know what Miracle Whip is, to be honest with you. I did it one time by accident. Yeah. Because it, I'm a Hellman's guy all the way. So shout out to Hellman. Shout out to Big Chickens. Oh, Travis, yeah. Travis, Travis, not oh, a yeah, you with Papa John's, too, ain't you? Yes. Shout out to hey, Papa this, John's. This is, this is, this is yeah, Papa that, now, that, yeah. I'm good, Papa John. I had a question in terms of you mentioned, you say this to me all the time. You say, you're one of those cool white guys. You know, you're not trying too hard. You and Travis are so different in the type of white guy. In the type of white guy. All right. Travis is a, I have 17 different pairs of fresh J's. Mm-hmm. You are, I want flip flops. Yeah. In all, you're wearing them right now. Yeah. Did one, t- did he take after mom? You took after dad? Like, no, I think, um, I think Travis. First of all, he played basketball, so he always loved basketball shoes, and he always liked like basketball cultural things, right? So I think he was always big into all that stuff. Um, I didn't play basketball; I played hockey and lacrosse, and like it was just a different demographic. Yeah. And I think Trav and I both are the same in the sense that we just do what we want, what we what we like, we're real. We're just trying to be ourselves. So I don't know that. You know, the stuff that he enjoys, uh, I might not enjoy. Like, he likes to go to the club. I want to go to a lounge. I want to be able to talk to people. I like talking yeah, to people. Yeah, yeah. Travis trying to dance, right? I think. <laughs> he really is. Yeah, like, he you really see it in is. the end zone. That's that's his that's his game. And I think, well, but no, at the same time. Rhythm too. Yeah, no doubt. But at the same time, uh, we're very, very similar. Like, I, I think that the material things are different. But as people, uh, we're integrity driven. We're honest. We, yeah. We're ourselves. And. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities from that regard. Do you think championships are like? I asked that question because from champion to champion, I know what it's like to win NBA title. What's it like to win the Super Bowl? Do you think it's similar? The feeling. There's so like, many more people. Or? Well, you, I don't. What do I yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Why am I being? Well, I don't know what it's like to win a basketball championship, but I think it's probably similar. I mean, you're 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 on top of the world, and you've done it with a group of guys uh, that. You know, any championship team, if you go that far, is going to develop an insane bond. And you're, when you have that piece of hardware, it's entrenched forever. You know what I mean? Like that team is entrenched. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you from both sides, from my perspective, I've, I've won it myself and I've seen my brother win it and I've lost it myself. Yeah. Um, winning it, uh, I mean, the people that make the movies are, are, are very good. Yeah, they are. I still remember uh, the last play of the game. Tom Brady goes back. He throws a pass. Yep. Hail Mary. Yep. And it literally felt like that entire Minnesota stadium was silent. Oh, man. And the ball felt like it was hanging up there forever. Oh, it there. drops. Me too. And you realize you're a world champion. And everything you selfishly, you're looking back to like everything you had to do to get there. Everything that. Did you cry? Went, yes. I'm a, I almost cried right now thinking about it. But Do it. No, I, I you, didn't cry, but somebody poked me in my eye. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> little tear, tear yeah, up. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you 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 think self. It's more of an intrinsic. When you win it, you're thinking, man, everything happened in like flashes, like in an instant, in your head. Yeah, and you're like, uh, and, and it's a very visceral, emotional moment. And then you start thinking about your teammates and everybody around you, and you see your coach and. And, and you know it's a very big deal. And, and your mom's there, and then you and see then your, your family, wife. And, yeah, and my, yeah, my brother, he was there. Oh so man! When your brother wins it, it's a very different feeling because you're so immensely happy for someone that you love, and it's not a it's it's a very 
external happiness, and it, it's hard to explain, but it's it's a different level. Losing a Super Bowl, probably one of the worst things. Highly don't recommend doing that. It sucks. Losing a champion, going all that way. And playing like so I said, well. When you, when you win it, you have it cemented. Yes. When you go all that way and you lose it, it's yes. like, yeah, you're so close fucking me. close. He man. was just talking about the Pistons series. Yeah, the Pistons yeah. series. Yeah. Two-part question. I, I know the love you have for your brother, and people should love their brother. Yeah. You have one, he has three. Has, has he ever tried to big boy you? He's Play two. He has two. Well, he's, two. Yes, he's, two. He's, he's a foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Has he ever tried to, like, big boy you? Playfully. In Campbell's soup commercials, respectfully. he has. I think if I ever tried to, like, uh, you know, rib him, I think he would do it. But I think... I mean, again, he's, you know, he's already, he's already, love. he's already so ahead of me. <laughs> like what he's going to flash his rings. Then he's going to show his stats. Then he's going to, you know, he's got more pro bowls, all pros. He's going to be like, by the way, I'm the most famous person. Yeah. I mean, he's going to go down in history as probably, I mean, no offense to all the other tight ends and Tony and, and Gronk. I mean, he's up there for the greatest ever. I've been very good at center. I don't think that I am in the conversation for greatest center ever. And it's a different position, too, where you can name... That's not for you to say. <laughs> I'm not saying you are. Fuck all that you're talking about right now. I'm saying you are. You're great. You're all right, all I appreciate you're that. Well, you're actually part of, like, the offensive lineman era where there are analytics where you can actually compare... I've been very lucky. No, seriously. No, I need you... analytics. No, I'm an Eagles fan. And he is capable of doing things that other centers from other eras are not capable of. And that's why I say he's a legend. He's, he, he had a faster 10-yard split than most running backs. Like, I used to watch footage of him outrunning running backs down the field. What's the 10-yard split? So when you run the 40-yard dash, the 10 yards, the first 10, right. really show how explosive you are. Like, yours would have been awful. <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Long strides. But it is crazy to think about Travis's career where, like, he was with Alex Smith. He was, a, he was a really, really good tight end. And now... Yeah. Tony well, Gonzalez, pets. Shannon Sharp, Kellen Winslow, yeah. like, he's passed? Wow. All right, I'm going to try some of the big chicken with this. Right here? Hellman's. <laughs> Hellman's. Hellman. I, I think there's a business partnership here. So I have seen Shaq recently get a lot of people involved in Reebok. Reebok. When I first, when I first came into the NFL, that was the... Uh, that was the jersey. That was the primary uh, NFL... Yeah. I believe. And Adidas that bought us out, moved us out the way, but we're coming back. When I'm looking for a great assistant, I want the best of the best. My championship career wasn't built with mediocre teammates. So that's why when I need to hire, I use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's matching technology shows you qualified candidates immediately after you post your job. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash B-I-G. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-I-G. ZipRecruiter, smartest way to hire. All right, so the incredible thing about doing a podcast with you, Shaq, is that it's not just talking to a former basketball player. I'm talking to one of the greatest businessmen that's ever lived. And one of the sponsors of our show, ZipRecruiter, uh, wants to kind of take what you've learned in life and teach people. And they want to do a, a segment called The Big Assistant. So I have some questions for you that maybe it can help people. Again, shout out ZipRecruiter. How many assistants do you currently have? Over 20. Holy moly. And that's because my favorite word in life is delegation. I want to do a podcast. Damn, damn. Call my boy Shane. I want to do a podcast. Damn, damn. Call my boy Adam. You always have to delegate. And I learned delegation by winning championships. No individual can win a championship by themselves unless you're playing an individual sport. But the things I do are not individual sports. Running a J.C. Penny is not an individual sports. Having ownership in Forever 21 is not an individual sport. Like, I'm here. I have to assign somebody to, to do that. So delegation is my favorite word. Second favorite word is trust. Like, if I'm going to tell you that, Shane... You, you run the podcast, you set it up, you call the people, I have to trust you. And the last thing is, do not micromanage. I don't micromanage nobody that works, and I don't like to use the term works for me, nobody that works with me. I never micromanage. So they may call me and say, hey, 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 what do you think? I say, handle it. 
that's what I pay you to do, so you handle it. So, you know, I, I love to delegate, and I love to have people uh, give them access to the right side of my brain so they could do things that I want to get accomplished. Shaq, how, uh, how do you deal with business owners or people that think they can do everything? I know you just you kind of broke it down to us why it's important, but how often do you have to deal with that? You know, a lot of people think and feel they could do everything. It's because, you know, based on experiences, like sometimes if you delegate to the wrong people and you, your outcome is not favorable, then sometimes you have to say, you know, I'm going to do it myself. But I trust everybody that I, I, I delegate to. So, you know, again, if I'm a, you know, want to want to open up a gym, I'm going to call my boy Rock. If I want to open up a, a boxing gym, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Alicia Bumgardner and, you know, delegate those those topics or those practices that I, I you know, want people to do it. Listen, to each his own. I, uh, I rather focus on what I know. What I know is basketball, what I know is music, what I know is how to have fun. Am I a smart businessman? Yes, but I rather align myself with people that are smarter. All right, last one. Shout out again to ZipRecruiter. They're trying to help people hire so they can build their businesses. When you realize that you've delegated and the person can't do it. How quickly do you go, I need to find someone who can? When I delegate to somebody and I find out that they can't do it, I always give them three chances. Because guess what? I can't do it either. So you're on my team. We're going to figure out together. Like, you know, when I first came in, I can't beat Mike. Hey, man, we're going to draft Chris Webber. No, don't grab, don't draft Chris Webber. I need this Penny Hardaway cat. Damn, we still can't beat, beat Mike. Hey, Horace, Horace Grant, he don't like being over there at the Bulls. Bring him over. Now we beat Mike. So, you know, I trust you to delegate for you. You don't figure it out. That's okay. Maybe we can figure it out together. We're a team now, and we get it done. But I always give a person three chances. Like like I told my boy yesterday, and I'm probably going to have to fire him after this. I said, hey, come get this old treadmill and get rid of it. He takes it around the corner from my house and dumps it in somebody else's yard. <laughs> That's what he does. He takes it around the corner and dumps it in somebody, not the back of the yard, in the front of the yard on the main street. So when I drove by this morning, I was like, is that a tread bill that I just told my boy to get rid of? <laughs> so Rock, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Third chance, sorry. So here's my idea. Yes. One of the highest selling shoes for every sneaker company is the dad shoe. But I don't think any shoe has officially marketed themselves as the dad shoe. They're, they're just known as it, yeah. And I think Jason Kelsey listen, could be the face of the dad shoe. If you, if you need something, I mean, listen. I like it. Do you like this idea? I love it. I love it too. 1% is all I ask. But I think for, you'd be great. Me. For me. <laughs> Putting the deal together? 1%. Um, I start, you know me, I don't try to win the deals. <laughs> I just want to be a part of it. Facilitating. Yeah. I don't even get 1%. <laughs> um, Aside, the materials were better when Reebok was there. I mean, really? Listen, I think Nike was phenomenal. They have started to go very cheap. cheap. Interesting. And I wear Nike cleats that they stopped making 10 years ago. I don't wear any of the new Nike cleats. The jerseys, listen, I, I respect Nike as a brand. Yeah. Reebok, everything was better, I think. Ooh, thanks. So I think it was... It was either Aristotle What's or Mike. Want to start off? I got the one. I'm good. Right. I think it was either Aristotle or Mike Jones who said back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that you got ignored for a lot of your career by a lot of different things and people. And I think they've all come forward. And I was curious what that experience is like. What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. You know. You're not really asked to come to Super Bowl Radio Row as a center. Oh, yeah, now you're it's not, a little bit different, yeah. You're not asked to work with brands as a I mean, center. I don't hold any grudges like that. I mean, yeah, I, you got to earn it. You got to, you know, the as a, as a young offensive lineman who hadn't done anything yet, why would anybody want to have me do yeah. anything like that, right? So you, I'm very prideful of where I have come and how far I've come, right? And you just talked about offensive linemen. You know, there's not a lot of offensive linemen that get – notoriety at all at all so for me to represent a group that largely you know they they put a lot of work in for a, not a lot of attention you know we're, we're at a time where offensive linemen some of them have the best personalities in the nfl absolutely and podcasting all the media now it allows these guys to to show that mm. and it's it's i think it'll be really good for that position 
This episode of Big Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. As someone who has found success through teamwork, I've seen the benefits of letting others help me. It's a big part of my daily self-care routine. And speaking of self-care, my friends at BetterHelp want to help you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. It's easy. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So become your own soulmates whenever you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Shaq today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Shaq. And did your brother start off as a lineman? Because my question is, how did he get to be the great tight end that he is? He started out as a quarterback, that's why. Quarterback. Andy played basketball. Most of the best football players I know played basketball. So do you especially know, tight ends. Do you know what Tony Shaq's Gonzalez, position was? I don't know, say that again, especially what? Especially tight ends. Because I played football in high school. Not as my level, but I was a tight end, and we had a play called alley yeah, ten to two yards. I actually told my and Mike has sat here and said throw. you would have been a tackle. Yeah. You're not a good yeah, enough mover. I have never understood why NFL teams don't just have somebody who's seven foot for red zone situations and just throw the ball to this him. This is exactly how do you defend it? Uh, we were texting during the year, and you were like, "I really like brotherly shove. I'm done with the name Tush Push." Yeah, yeah. But it, man, the debate was not. Stop. Brotherly, all shove. Year. Jumbo, brotherly, brotherly shove is cold. It is, yeah. man. That's nice. But hold on. Tush push is... It's not bad. It's, it's got a nice... I mean, hey. it rhymes. But it's also dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Barkley loves the name Tush oh, Push. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> tush push. Um, you mean uh, debating in terms of like how fair it is or the name? Well, let's start with the name. I mean, the name is, you can call it whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a quarterback sneak to me. You want to call it Tush Push, Brotherly Shove, whatever you want to call it. You said on your podcast, again, um, New Heights, which obviously all of you guys have watched already. Yes, we have. You said, and I love this, it's an about, was it an assembly of men? Yeah. Organized mass. Organized mass. I stole that from another uh, a Scotsman named Richie Gray. Rugby, his, his title, he goes around to different teams. His title is... Collision expert. Wow. Pretty cool title. Right. But all he does is focus on how to uh, in, like improve the angle and ways to uh, tackle better. Ways to I have to imagine push. other teams have brought this guy in. He, he was, I, he's been all over. Yeah. So then why did it, is it a combination of you and Jay? I mean, look, and Landon's huge and Maialata. Yeah. It's everything, why, yeah. why did it work so much more with y'all? I think it's more organized with the way Stout coaches it than most teams. This isn't a play you rep in practice. Right. So yeah, you hurt people. Yeah, you, it's or the quarterback. You know, you don't just want to expose that, right? And um, Stout is very detailed on how he coaches it. You even when you're walking through, he's very detailed on how you're walking through it. I think most teams just kind of line up and run it from an offensive line's perspective. You call it a wedge block, but you're not detailed on how that wedge block is done. And the quarterback, he needs to be in tune with how the offensive line is doing it. So. I think we're very detailed, and then plus, because you don't get times to practice it, we've run it so much that our rep count versus the defense who's not practicing it is, you know, we've run it probably four or five times as much as anybody in the league at this point. Yeah. So that helps. The number one high school in Cleveland Heights offers you a coaching job. In Cleveland Heights? Yes, a college offers you a head coaching job. An NFL team offers you a assistant head coaching job. Do you take it? Number one um, school in Cleveland Heights. Nice football so program, I'm a lot probably, of players. If it was a if it was a number one school in Philadelphia, I might take it. Because the family's there. Yeah, my wife, I, my in laws help out. I, I'm 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 Philly right now, and Lise and Ed, I, I, we would be lost without their help with our girls and everything. So, um, Cleveland Heights would be something though. Um, NFL, that's a big time commitment. College, no, not Never. interesting. It's too, it's too much. You got to recruit. You got to coach. You, you'll never be with your family. I feel like the best two levels of coaching are high school where you get to develop kids and really form them and, and help them grow into men and, and offer that guidance. And then in the NFL, you get to compete at the highest level. Uh, but it's still a time commitment in the NFL, but that's where like financially it kind of makes sense with the time commitment. I know you're a sports See? fan. I like to ask this question. What do you remember from Shaq's career? I remember the most dominating big man I've ever seen play the game. And not only, I remember, I remember it two different parts. Cause I remember the Lakers and I remember 
the, the, the second half of the career, which was incredibly dominant in the paint and just overwhelming power at all times. But I also remember the athleticism in Orlando he's where like he's running the- Micah Parsons. You that, Micah? <laughs> Micah said I had no athleticism. What? Yes. See, he's young. He doesn't yeah. remember Orlando. That, that's right. That's so what it comes right. down to. Yeah. yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't remember- Pinstripes, uh, bro. Yes. Yeah. Pinstripes. That's right. He doesn't remember, what was the movie? God, I can't think of the name right Blue now. Blue Chips. Blue Chips. He wasn't around for it. No. You and your brother have discipline that I'm familiar with. So my question is, was your dad hard on you too? Yes. Very hard. He, he, he was hard. He, he was honest. He, he was... He, no, you have a connection. Planet. You have a connection. We, bro, we, we're from the same planet. So I'm studying as a new dad, and I'm like, how hard do I have to be on this kid? I would actually love for your yeah, advice on Yeah, but it's different. I, I'm, don't, yeah, I, I'm new. I'm in... Yeah, I don't... I wow, think, you both just were like, nah. No, because so you don't want my like son to be a professional. I don't athlete? like giving parenting advice. I think, okay. I think, I think uh, you love your children, and you and you you're, you're honest with them, and you're and, and you keep them accountable. But I've I've read books and I've tried like all this stuff, and I think most parents are just figuring it out. Yeah. And if you approach it with the the overall mentality that you love them, and you and you're gonna you know. You're gonna you're gonna hold them accountable and 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 and, and keep them uh, uh, and be honest with them. Yeah. I mean, I don't That's know. That's what's important. Yeah, to me. I've never I've never ever had to spank my kids. Like I, I was a high level juvenile delinquent. I was a follower. So, basically, my my dad's disciplining was first developing me to a leader, and he was always saying, "You're not gonna be out here getting in trouble like I did," and he would touch me up, and I'm glad he did. The best part of our game day is the food spread. And for the big game, one of my favorite dishes is a big chicken sandwich. But what some people don't know is that the secret ingredient for rich and creamy flavor in dishes like buffalo chicken dip, onion dip, sandwiches and pasta salads is Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. Hellman's doesn't just have real mayo, they also have flavor dressings like spicy mayo, which pairs great with a big chicken sandwich, and they got garlic aioli for your fries. So make every dish rich, creamy by visiting Hellman's.com for delicious recipes. That's Hellman's.com. Leftover chicken, scallions, cheese. What am I gonna make with this? Mayo. 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 Hellman's, you can talk. A chicken salad sandwich, God, I love you. I went viral and it's still going. Lefko asked me if I opened up to a woman. Emotionally. Emotionally. So my question is, and I hope I'm not being disrespectful, do you open up to your wife? Would I open up in what way? Like emotionally? Yes. Yeah, I'm an emotional person. Got it. Yeah, Shaq went viral because he said, in no circumstances should you, because they'll throw it back in your face. I get it. I am, uh, I have the, I would love to hide it, but I'm bad at hiding it. I, like, for some reason, I cry like a baby when I gave, yeah. I give speeches to the team. I'm, I have great respect. This is another thing. Somebody said something about it in the paper about it's like toxic masculinity or, you know, this is what's wrong. We can't be emotional in front of people. And I have nothing wrong with people that are emotional, but people that can control their emotions and release them at the right time or at, in the right moment, um, that is a great sign of self-control and self. So I don't have that. I am very emotional, unfortunately. And I mean, it's sometimes it leads to these incredible highs and yeah. it's like, it gives me stronger. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, uh, she probably uh, stopped being a little baby, but yeah, it's the way it works. Yeah. But I was explaining like a uh, comedian friend of mine asked the question, who do you talk to? And I was explaining to him is we're blessed. Yeah. Right. So the problems that we think we have, are they really problems? Yeah. On the way over here, I saw seven homeless people. Yeah. This is Super Bowl weekend. Right. I, I flew here private. Yeah. All my boys. Hopefully, I'm in a suite next to Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, so my, my little problems, are they yeah. really problems? So I'm able to go home and be like, shut the hell up. Yeah. Up whining. Yeah. House is 70,000 square feet. <laughs> you got a chef. And then I can hear my father talk, man up. Because now, when I was married, I don't want to, my wife already dealing with a lot. Yeah, I crazy babies, this and that, and that, the internet, and that. I don't want to put more pressure on her. So that's why I've never 
you know, that's why I always held it to myself. But for some reason, it, it's going viral and toxic management. I wouldn't call it toxic. It's just that I, I care about people, and I'm blessed. I'm super blessed. Is it really a problem? But to me, that's just you. What you just explained to me is you have the self awareness and can, first of all, you can control that emotion, and then you can look at it reflectively and say, life ain't that bad. It's, it's pretty damn good, right? And I, and and then certain emotions. I can deal with, but I don't let them drive me crazy. Like I explained to him, when my sister passed away and Kobe passed away, it was my fault. Not their death, it was my fault because as the leader, as a guy, I could have called and said, Kobe, what's up? Yeah. I could have called my sister and said, hey, I love you, but I'm working like, so it's my fault that, hey, you didn't take time to take two minutes just to say, I love you, I miss you. So I deal with that every day, but it's like, again, there's people with way more problems than me. So I'm not going to sit there and say, eh, I deal mean? with it. I deal with it, and then you just move on. But yes. it's going, like, it's been it's been on every talk show. That Shay Shay and <laughs> the World Star yeah. Hip Hop, The View. Yeah. And they all got something to say, but. Well, it's just as, how it, as but, you know, uh, none of that means nothing. It's a bunch of people saying nonsense. Yeah, but I could tell by you, your brother. I think Gronk is in that category. I can tell who was raised by. I can, <laughs> yeah. No, I, bro, I can tell. Yeah. Like, I can tell, like, just by, just by what watching. Do, what do I seem like? Yeah, you, you're like that, too. Like, you Ooh. have. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't sure. I yeah. wasn't sure. Like, you have, like, you know, great discipline. Now, when I say a great father, it's not about this. No, 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 no. It's about being somebody strong. No, like Bruce is the man. Like, my father, even though I got spanked a lot, he always had a message. A message, a message that still resonates with me today. Yeah. I was telling him when my chef makes a sandwich, one slice of turkey, yeah, one slice of cheese, and some Hellman's mayo. You know, my chef would get like, bro, growing up, I couldn't have seven pieces of turkey. Yeah, take that one yeah. slice of turkey, yeah. cheese, his Hellman's <laughs> mayo. Might have a Hellman's. <laughs> you know, hey, it don't matter, but that, that that's just the way it is. If if you had to designate someone the Shack of the NFL, and not just current. But all time. All time? Who would have that designation? Oh my Damn, gosh. that's a good question. Thanks. So first of all, I did we we did you do a team of, we we did do a team of building uh an NFL team from other sports and Shaq was on my team. I just want to say that. So um How old are you? Uh, I'm 36. Okay, so you're young, bro. I was getting ready to call you big, bro. So <laughs> thanks, little bro. <laughs> um so man, I don't Sap. Trying to think of the of you gotta the, be a similar size. I mean, like well, I nobody, say, nobody was your size. That's the thing is Aaron Donald's dominant, but he's not big. You no, know, when, when I think of a, a big, overpowering, just Dominican Sue, but I don't think he dominated as much as Shaq did. Sap, Sap was really dominant. Sap was very dominant. Reggie White, Reggie White is a good. That's it. That's the one. It, it's either Reggie that's White. That's a hell of a. It's a great one, and it, and that's it. Refrigerator is not at your level. Okay, yeah, and it, I, I would pick a tackle, but most tackles don't. Like a Jonathan Ogden. Yeah, exactly. But they don't, it's not the same level of uh But you were going to talk about Reggie White there. Oh, I think it's Reggie. I think that's the best one. You, you knocked out of the park with that yeah. one. Ray Lewis? Ray, different. Different. Ray, Ray was very uh, explosively powerful. Uh, but in terms of the explosion and just the overwhelming force yes. and the athleticism combined with it, I, I don't know that there's the anybody reason, else. The reason that it's like Reggie is you had clips that nobody else could do, that you could go through a chest. Reggie has clips where he's knocking an offensive lineman into the quarterback. That's just an offensive lineman, like Larry Allen, like the best yes. offensive tackle yes. of all time. Like. I also went viral the other day, because it, it was a, a moment for me that happened. It was like, I was scared when I first saw Michael Jordan. So my question to you is, anybody high first, school, college, pros, anybody, like like when you first see him, like, oh my God, I think the is. first time you play any of these greats, there's a certain level of fear, and hopefully it's a healthy fear, right? right? Like, I don't subscribe to, like, you know, if you're afraid that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's more the reaction to that. I've played a lot of my best games where I am, like, th it's a respect that this dude can beat me. Yeah. So you prepare harder. The, the hair on your neck stands up a little bit higher. Uh, for me, it's always when I played the the big the big guys that I've never seen before played against. And Dominic Sue when he was in Detroit. Uh, Aaron Donald in, in, in with the uh, Rams, uh, and, and there's been a bunch of nose guards. Linval Joseph, uh, uh, it, it, the list goes they, on. Uh, Whenever yeah. you're playing those players, um, you, and you know that they are the best at what they do in the world, there's a healthy amount of that for sure.
you know, when I stopped being scared. So I was scared, like the intro, everything was crazy. Yeah. So he came baseline, he shot a jumper, and I was right there. I was like, okay. Michael Jordan, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. He was right, he was, he, he was right there, and I was like, right there. I didn't block it, but I was like, okay. He's human. Yeah. But, but like, you know, the first couple of plays of the game, you looked at him, and every, every shot he made, I was like, God damn. And to your credit, it is usually that first, it's, it's, Leading up to the game, there's, a, there's a, oh, what's this going to feel? And then the first time you hit him, the Jew is like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> I got this. So we talked about this at TNT recently. You started coming into the Undertaker theme song. And so they would go pitch black at the Staples Center, dong, and you would come out. Did I read or hear that you would look at the eyes of the other team yes. and see if they would get afraid? Yes. And would, would people like lower their heads? So on this part right here. Oh, say so can I did this part right every time. And the land, uh, the free. Like I'm, I'm you look at up real yeah, angry. So, 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 so if I look at you and you put your head down, I got you. First of all, I got you anyway. But if I make eye contact, if you're gonna do that, now I only gotta do one more thing to to make sure. First play of the game, I'm trying to get offensive foul. Oh, you're purposely trying to throw a bow. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing a bow, and I hope it hits you here, here, or here. So, so now you know I'm not playing. I'm coming to kill you. So, but yeah, so. Follow up question. Did Sacramento anyone make game okay. Sacramento game seven? Vladi Diva. Looked away? Looked away, terrified. I'm like, this part right here. Put on the land, on the free, and the home. I'm like, he looked at me like this. He was like, <laughs> and, I was like <laughs> and I knew we had him. Had was him. there ever someone that you looked at and they were looking you dead in the face? No fear. Tim Duncan. Wow. Tim Duncan. Like, I was looking, I'm, and I'm bouncing, and he's going, let me go. He's bouncing back. Like, <laughs> like, what about when you were like Miami and Kobe was in LA? Did you look at him? Yeah. I know it's different we, positions. We, we, we look, but it's like different positions. It was like, a, you know, for me, it was, a, I'm going to get one before you get one. Because we had the same arguments. Oh, you, you, you can win, but you can't win without Shaq. You can win, but you can't win without Kobe. So. Right. The fact that he has two and I have one, I went crazy in my house. Because again, like, I'm, I'm, you know, similar to you and your brother, it's a respectful competition thing. And I don't ever want nobody to have one up on me. So the fact that he has four, I mean, five and I have four, it drives me crazy. Still. It really does. Yeah, <laughs> Like, because when I won in Miami, I got a $2 million check the next day. They said, hey, we want you to go, because, you know, they called, they said, hey, man, we want you to go to Superman from there. Kyle, remember that? After I won in Miami, they wanted me to go to Superman premiere. That was crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. so look, I told him, I said, no, I don't want to go to Superman premiere. He's like, two million. So we had one, got me a plane. I'm, I'm in LA on the red carpet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I did. I did. Yeah. He got paid more than the guy that played yeah, Superman. So I was there and I was like, yep, I got one. And then I kind of, I was kind of done. But then he won and then he won again. I was like, that's why I was like, I admit, my last three years, I was championship, championship chains. Because if I can get five, he got five. It, right. it's, but the fact that he got five and I got four drives me crazy. <laughs> it really does. I'm excited for you, Jason, in that when I watched your documentary, I was taken aback at the point where you were so worried about what you were going to do in retirement, where you were yeah. looking at raising cattle. Well, I, I got I got 20 head of cattle in Missouri. And now, though... You cattle? Uh, no, there, it's, a, it's like a... It's a cross you touch them? Yeah. I'm scared. Scared? I live on a farm in Georgia with no animals. Okay. Like, but I'm, I don't. You're afraid of the animals? Yes. Which animals? Any animal. Well, I have dogs, but <laughs> There's I don't. no way. Bro, what the hell am I going to do with a cow? And I'm not, uh, no offense. No, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not the guy who want to get the cows and, and do the meat. I'm, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. So. The fact that I don't want to touch them and play with them and feed them, so I, do you, I don't even. Are you? Is it what is it? Just crop farm, cropland? What are you doing? The bro, he's got like basketball hoops out there. Yes, yeah, so it's I a drone. It's a drone racing field. Oh, is no, what it is. that sounds. That sounds pretty fun. <laughs> uh, I got fifty acres of trees. But I, I just know. I see the way that you're attacking like life right now. Yeah. Now with the podcast and everything. Yeah. It's it like you weren't even looking for it, and it happened. Yeah, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm set up for... It's incredible. There's a lot of opportunities and things that are going to be available to do in retirement, but I'm also cognizant after talking to everybody that's played that none of that is going to be the same as playing 
So, so that's why he DJs. This is actually a really good conversation. You know that? Yeah. The reason he DJs, he always way. said it's the closest he's ever felt to walking out at Staples, and there's twenty thousand people. Just because you're live in front of a, a, a bunch of people, like what? What makes you feel that way? I don't like to use the D word, but when I stopped playing, I was doing I've never done before, talking to neighbors. And again, I had another year in Boston, but I had the injury, so I didn't have any deals or anything. So I'm just at my house. I'm, I like I usually like wake up at the 10 to go to practice. I wake up at 10, but like, oh, I don't have nothing to do today. Yeah. So I go to like I was actually looking for people to go, hey, check, like because I, <laughs> I didn't have it. So one time I went to this tournament and TS was performing. There was a hundred thousand people out there, and that when he came out, it felt like it felt like it felt like Kobe. Next time you cross Scotty Pippen up, throw the lob, and they just felt like that. So then yeah. I used to DJ in high school and college. I said, I'm starting doing So now I'm like one of the biggest DJs, but that's why I did, because I actually lose money DJing. But that hour, hour and a half, the, the banging and the jumping up and down. The feeling it gives you. It's that like uh, adrenaline. That we will never understand. That, dopamine, that, that yes. adrenaline. Yes. So is that, that's what you've heard from former players is you'll never get to touch that. So I was that. just talking, most of the guys, I've talked to have said something similar, and I think Chris Long said it really well, which is when you're playing, you're like this. With your, 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 you're winning the highest of highs, you're losing the lowest lows in your emotions, and the way you're riding it are like this and this and this, right? And then once you're done playing, you're like this, Flat right? Line. And, you, and, and they, they, it feels weird, and it takes a while to get used to that. I mean, I've never done it. I haven't done it yet, but it's coming. And I think that's... I thought he did a good job of explaining that was you, you almost feel like you're you're like you're not there right? anymore. Yeah, like yeah. I, like it, it's it's like why am I not having that 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 insane high that I had when I was playing football? So I think you need to DJ is why we brought you. I don't know that I can I can play saxophone. Shut up. Like I haven't done it in a while. Saxophone? Well, baritone saxophone, but I can play alto as well. My advice he, to you he is, lays down a few notes on stage. You know who does DJ? Who wants to DJ is Trav. Yeah. I got him. Travis yeah. Kelsey? I got him. Come DJ Trav? got him. Oh. Seriously. If he opened up for Taylor Swift, you know, that's crazy. He does this. Every time he's in his phone, he finds the song, and then he finds uh, what the hook is based off of. That's like his favorite thing to do. Oh, like this that's is where the... Yeah, yeah, from. yeah. He's, he's all into it. <laughs> so my advice... That's all we do, by the way, at yeah. backstage at TNT. There you go. Everyone... We're watching the games, but it's Shaq being like, when's the last time you heard this? <laughs> my advice to you is if you are going to retire... Yes. Accept it. Enjoy your family, brother. Thank you. I made a lot of dumb mistakes to where I lost my family and I didn't have anybody. That's not the case for you. So enjoy your beautiful wife. Enjoy your beautiful kids. And never dwell on what we had. Yeah. What we had is what we got. You got the ring. People know who you are. Enjoy it. Because again, sure. I was I was an idiot. And I've talked about it for a long time. Lost my whole family. Spent 100,000 square foot house by myself. And that's when I got. But again, the way I was raised, up. Yeah. Man up. Yeah. Deal with it. But, you know, so so that's my advice to you. Thanks for coming, brother. You're the man, I'm a bro. big fan of yours. Hey, thank you so much. Well, tell mom and dad, and I'll hopefully I'll see you at the Super Bowl. And tell Miss Taylor Swift, I just want to shake her hand. I, I think she would be in I, I don't want no picture or nothing. I just want to say that I, I met a legend. All right. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. We do have some mo problems. What mo happened? money, mo problems. What happened? The clip that continues to spread around the world of when I asked, do you open up emotionally to women? And you said, no, you shouldn't do that or else they'll throw it back in your face. Shannon Sharp brought it up to your good friend, Monique, and Monique had this to say. How do you take advice from a man who has no woman? And I love Shaq, but how do you take advice from my brother that has no one? She said, I love my baby. I love my brother Shaq, but who do you open up to? So she, she did disagree with you. The answer, my beautiful sister, and I love you too, Monique. First of all, let me address this. We can have respectful disagreements without getting personal. And I would never get personal with Miss Monique. Yeah. I'll never get personal with a woman on air, yeah. on social media. I love Monique. She knows I love her. But I'm going to address her questions. She used the word pillow talk. I don't pillow talk. Mm. She used the word, uh, Shaq doesn't have a woman. Really, Monique? Monique, really? But who do I open up to? Nobody. And let me tell you why. Because my remedy to success is 
I have sayings. Like for example, on the way over here, I saw seven homeless people, bro. Who am I to complain? I flew here private. I got my whole crew with me. We got a million dollar suite. So in other words, before I start getting all sad, I say, shut the up, man up, and figure it out. So therefore, all the problems that I have, I have to define that they're really problems. And they're not. There's people with far worse problems than I got. And I feel for those people. So I don't and complain, because again, I was raised by a drill sergeant. Yeah. And I'm glad he raised me the way he raised me. So to answer my beautiful sister, Monique, when I have problems, I have to define if they're real problems. And most of the time, they're not. He says something about me. <laughs> she says something about me. <laughs> no, I'm not that guy. I'm here. Yeah. And, and, and the reason why I'm here, because so many people depend on me. My mother depends on me. I ain't got time to be soft. Yeah. My father told me, you don't play well, your mama gonna lose her house. Imagine that pressure. Yeah. So I'm not gonna be like, uh, be like, you know what, I'm gonna get my mama a new house. The only time where I think I've seen you emotional is when you went through that awful stretch with family loss. Yes. Do you go to family in times like, like were you able, or do family members come to you? I'm always gonna be emotional about my sister and Kobe. Yeah. It's my fault. And what I mean by it's my fault, I could have been the bigger man and be like, baby sister, I love you. Cole, what's up, my boy? Yeah. Like, like, when you're a leader, you don't have to wait. And in those moments, you looked at the situation and just, you, you... You always think you have time. Yeah. You always think you have time. Like, I need to start calling you more. I know I see you every Tuesday, but I, I need to... I can't take your hand and see you every day and you're going to see me, so... That's why you say I love you all the time. Yeah, but... I respect so, that. So, that's going to always be with me. I but then again... You. But then again, I'm not going to be at home pillow talking, telling somebody, yeah, it's just something I deal with and I deal with it my own way. You do now more than again, talk on that pillow, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yes, exactly. No, but now again, the clip that went viral, this is just me. Yeah. You don't have to use my method. You ask me what I do and I say no. And But I like it because people can agree or disagree, but this is who I am and yes. I'm not gonna change. Yeah, you're not asking other people to do the same just, thing. I'm just saying this is not nothing I do because I'm taught to be a man's man, man. Yeah. If you got problems, deal with it. Don't put those problems on your wife and your kids. Deal with it, sucker. Uh, let's so get, Monique, that, that's a good. I love you too, my sister. And I appreciate the back and forth. And you know, I always got your back, baby. I love you. That's the thing is, the thing I, I respected about Monique is that she, there, it was never an insult to you. That was just her read on the situation. And you know what? Because like, I watched the whole interview. She talked about how her recent relationship saved her life. And so I could tell that's sharing with her, man, is important to her. It's not important to everybody. And I think, and I hope I don't get in trouble with this, I think women are way more emotional than men. They are. And as a woman, you're supposed to invite to your man because he's supposed to take care of her. Because a man's three jobs to protect, provide, and love. So baby, if you got a problem, you come to me. But me not having a woman, come on, Monique. As always, in the comment section, you can ask Dr. O'Neill, uh, and of course you can tweet or Instagram message our handles for the big podcast with Shaq. Marcus from Orlando. Okay. Dear Dr. O'Neill, my wife caught our 16-year-old son trying to play sports bets with my account. When she confronted him about it, he said he learned it from me. She wants me to talk to him, but I feel like I'm being a hypocrite if I do. How would you handle it? This is a tough one. This is a, a reward or punishment type of answer. Let's go with the reward. He's a good student like you. All A's and all B's. 16, about to be 17, about to be 18. Talk to him like a man. Yeah. You say, it's a boy or girl? Son? Boy. So you say, son, I know this is what I do. Well, first of all, you messed up by using my account without my permission. Now you got to do a certain amount of chores to pay me this money back. And this is why I do it. I do it because I pay all the bills around here. I'm allowed to do it. You're not allowed to do this yet. So the fact that you did it behind my back, I'm upset with you, but I'm still proud of you. Got all A's, boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yeah. But you got to do this. Now, if he's a bad kid, you got to punish him all the way. Mm. Cut grass, wash dishes, do this, do that. And then you give him the incentive. Say, hey, when you get your grades up, when you get 18, maybe we can do something together. So like when I like punish my kids, I, I 
My dad went all the way with me. I don't go all the way. Like I give him something to say. Like for example, clean your room up, but you're playing, playing, playing the PlayStation. Take it away. You clean your room up 20 days in a row, I get you the new PlayStation 5. Dad, that's not even out yet. I'm no. dad, I can make I'm it. So, so a lot of times I take the punishment and use it as motivation rather than going, I don't know what type of kid he is, so I can't say go hard or go soft. That's why I had to give you both scenarios. But 16, 17 is not a kid, spankings are over. Just have an adult conversation. Now, I am not a doctor, unlike Dr. O'Neill, but I'm gonna give unsolicited Dr. Lefko advice. Mine is not official. If you are having a hard time not gambling yourself, I think that you need to also have a conversation. Because if this is something that you are trying to hide from the family, and you feel bad that your son's doing it, and you don't wanna say anything because you don't wanna stop, it's an epidemic in our country right now, and I do think that you need to have a conversation with yourself. I, I need to get the true definition of addict from you. So if I gamble every day, that makes me an addict? Gamble, an addict for me is this. You're losing. Right. You're losing. You know that you shouldn't, but you need to get that bet in. Okay. And, and it's not even about the game. You don't even need to watch the game. I know people, bro, that don't even watch the game, but they have to have money out there. Uh. Because they need that rush. And I learned from a lot of gambling addicts, you know what they say? That that rush of maybe losing is bigger than the win, which to me is some scary. So can you be an addict if you win all the time? I still think you can. If, if you're at your kid's birthday party and you're not paying attention because you're trying to get these games, if you're not living life and you're focused in that app, I think it's an addict. What do you think? I don't know. Well, when things are great, the addictions hide themselves. Like when I'm out of here all the time, I gamble. Win or lose, but... How do you gamble? Are you going to put a bet on the Super Bowl? No. I don't, I don't know how to gamble like that. Well, so what is not white guy gambling? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how to white guy gamble. So what kind of black guy gambling are you doing out here? I, I, hey, Shane, producer of the podcast, big podcast, number one podcast in the land. I bet you $100. Uh, Travis Kelsey, don't get a touchdown. Like we just, hold, I don't do the odds uh, and the no. I don't. I don't even know how to. Yours read are. Yours are. Happen or not happen. Happen or not happen. So do they have those bets in Vegas? Yes, they do. They're called money line bets. So you could bet Chiefs to win or Niners to win. Yeah. Travis are so different in the type of white guy. In the type of white guy, all right.